Hello, and welcome to Exploring Axon, a podcast where we discuss Axon Framework, Axon Server, and their ecosystem. I am your host and a software developer at Axonic, Sarah Tori. I had the privilege of speaking with Alberto Brandolini, who came up with the concept of event storming. But we also spent some time talking about other topics as well. This conversation was divided into two sessions. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. And let's have a listen. Hi, Alberto. How are you today? Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, thank you for, uh, for inviting me. Uh, all good here. Yeah, getting sunny. We cannot appreciate it, but uh, yeah. I know with the lockdown, how you, go, you guys are back in lockdown again. Uh, Yes, we actually never never got out. Just like a, a, little, a little bit of freedom, and uh, but uh, yeah, it's like they loosen up the tie tied a little bit, and then they tied it back up. And yes, so, yeah, oh, yeah. Eh, terrible. Anyways, but I am so happy to have you today, and I'm so glad that you're healthy and well, and uh, still, you know, busy, busy, busy. Yep. So <laughs> let's talk a little bit. I, I have a lot of questions. And um, of course, I'm sure a lot of people want to hear about event storming. But let's start uh, a little bit prior to that. And uh, tell me a little bit about your background and uh, maybe work experience, education, and also where are you located? Okay, well, let's start from the easiest thing. Located uh, Italy, uh, Faenza, my small town. Actually, I traveled a lot. Then I moved back to my hometown. I and uh, that was a, an easy choice. And but still working, I used to work all over Europe and uh, sometimes the world. Uh, but um, yeah, now I'm just uh, doing everything remotely with this uh, VJ uh, setup. Uh, yeah, stand up desk. And uh, uh, yes, that is the thing. Talking about the studies instead. Uh, well, I. I got a computer as a Christmas present. I think that was back in 1982, if I'm right. And, so you were uh, one of the probably very few families who actually had any computers at their house. Yeah, yeah. And it was uh, the, the Sinclair Spectrum at that time, the uh, small, uh, invulnerable type of box. I mean, it just fell from uh, top of the, of the yeah, Get never broken, and uh, an ocean <laughs> is uh, <laughs> absolutely uh, eternal. And, uh, and 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 I start coding with, with with that thing. Of course, as a teenager, I wanted to build my own video games. And we actually, yeah, actually ma- made one. Never made it to the stores, but we could uh, have fun playing it. And uh, and yeah, that's how it started. Then the, the studies followed it. Like uh, I got a degree in computer engineering uh, and. Um, Yes, I did, did international exchange program one year. So this this really helped me, uh, well, both for speaking English, both for seeing things from a different perspective. But uh, um, and same, where did you do that? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, sorry. Where did you do that? Where did you do uh, the exchange uh, Finland, program? Uh, Tampere. Finland. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So just just. Uh, mind twisting because uh, I ended up being in a reality that was completely different uh, from uh, university styles, uh, type of starting and, and, and so on. And uh, I think it had an influence in terms of uh, trying to see things from different corners because uh, the, the way we were taught things, uh, uh, I mean, in schools it looks like that is the way. And then if you get to, into two different schools or two different universities, Oh no, there's always different ways to see the same problem. And you don't want to get stuck into only one vision. And uh, yeah. And was it eye opening for you in terms of just uh, technical things or more in terms of um, how to basically come up with uh, the ideas for systems, programs, applications, things like that? Or was it just a a, a technicality of things that was different? Like, for instance, you uh, were working in a certain language and then you went there and they're completely using something different. Well, there was something about the language that that, that I really Mm -hmm. love. Like uh, I was studying on on my Italian university books and turn out the prose was really, really complicated. I remember... Mm -hmm. Uh, highlighting a sentence in my uh, electronic uh, books, and uh, it has uh, ten verbs before the the the, the mark, the, the, right. the final dot, and ten verbs inside <laughs> the same paragraph. 
how do I, how am I supposed to understand this? And right. then I find myself having an easier time studying in English than in Italian. And uh, interesting, yeah. Yeah, it, it feels weird. Okay, so I, I can I can find my way uh, in this way. Later, when I came back to Italy, I actually never stopped this habit. I kept studying uh, computer science on uh, on English books, and and basically this taught me to build my own way. And uh, even when I when I was joining my first company as an intern for my um, uh, thesis work, I was having a couple of books on my desk, and uh, well, a few people around. What are you doing with these books? Well, I'm actually using them for, uh, and um, I, yeah. So I guess this gave me a lot of your learning is your own business. It's not somebody else. Uh, don't trust anybody telling you you should do this and this, and that's gonna be enough. No, it's never enough, and it's gonna be up to you to find the next book, find the next source of information. Curiosity is a pretty good driver. Absolutely. So now I have to ask you. So the um, because I know the um, from from your previous talks and so forth, uh, you have explained that the process of event storming when you came up with it was actually happening in a, uh, in an Italian meetup that you had, yep. and you were participating with some friends and colleagues and so forth. So, do you do those meetups in English or in Italian, or um, do you use the technical forms in English or Italian? I should ask. <laughs> right. um... Well, now we don't do real meetups anymore. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. But back in the day, <laughs> but we we actually did 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 both. Like I, both. I still I still try to uh, be part of the Italian communities. Like sure, uh, sure. both in the agile stuff and in the we actually started a DDD Open um, uh, conference uh, a, a month ago, an open space uh, uh, for the Italian community. Maybe it's not going to be limited to Italian later on. It was an experiment for. Uh, uh, for us, and they, it actually worked well. So uh, we try to do to do both things, but at the same time, let's say I have this little fight of mine. Like, uh, if you want to be on the cutting edge, and if you want to be on the cutting edge in Italian, uh, then th th there's something missing. Like the thing that was really interesting for me was uh, being part of a broader conversation. Right, like right. You can translate the concept, but, but then you're having the same conversation two years later. And it's not the same conversation anymore because you're missing some voices and you're missing the innovation and having the same conversation two years later. Well, come on, it's it's boring. Just watching the same movie, uh, yeah, two years later after everybody knows how it ended. Uh, and um, yeah, yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Absolutely. And um I think part of um, the this sort of uh, world we live in right now with everything being virtual and things like that, I guess the silver lining could be that we are so much more connected now and we can explore in a way that we didn't in the past. Well, of course, there are certain things that we all miss, like the, that human interaction, that sort of... Um, physically being in a different space and uh, experiencing things from different uh, points of views and being in different locations. So that's all uh, things that we we absolutely miss. But I think on the flip side of it, it's nice to be able to really expand this network and expand this this knowledge because now you can really communicate with everybody in the world as, as long as the time zone allows or they want to be up in the middle of the night or early in the morning or what have you. We have these communications and we can expand the network, which I think is a uh, is a nice evolution that's happening currently that wasn't super available to us in the past, I think. Yeah, you know, that, that that for us has been uh, a major change. So mm -hmm. uh, I like uh, the metaphor that I, that I like to use for this one. It's just uh, we are all neurons on, on a bigger, of, of a bigger brain. The, the, the thing that was uh, shocking for me on, on, on Twitter was, uh, um, so before before this, I was just reading books of the, of the uh big uh, big people and uh, and then later i find myself in, engaging uh, with them and, and i was not engaged uh, so in the topic of the conversation was something that was not yet written in the books so it, it was just like uh, okay we are discussing something which is the current pain of a virtual community uh, spread around the world we're not discussing things i mean the moment you put things on paper it it, it's already obsolete or, or just starting the, the path to obsolescence. So 
while this is happening in real time. And uh, okay, well, that's exactly the cutting edge. At the same time, it was really efficient to see people pointing uh, other people to, okay, well, good conversation. I think this book and this book can help you. And uh, I really felt part of a, of a community that was learning at the pace that was uh, uh, really amazing. Um, Absolutely. And I think for me personally, um, the amount of um, knowledge that's out there uh, sometimes can get overwhelming, but also um, in sort of a good way, because you get to actually talk to these individuals on a more personal level now, because now we're all sitting home, working from home in front of our computers. And so um, there is a little bit more um, accessibility to these individuals where you can just reach out and say, hey, can you uh, talk to me more about this topic that you just brought up? Or, um, hey, you had this new idea. Can you tell me more about it? Which I find really, really interesting. Whereas before uh, we would have to, as you mentioned, like wait for this book. And, you know, by the time the book comes in, there are all sorts of other new ideas coming up, which is uh, which is interesting. And another thing that uh, is really cool, now that you mentioned you have this DDD community in Italy, and I'm so tempted to join it. Maybe that will help me refresh my Italian because I took <laughs> Italian in college for several years and it's all gone. So it, it's really cool, though, because it makes it possible for me um, as, as a mom and as a person who works from home. And so I don't have a whole lot of time to travel and be in different places to really be able to um, have access to this level of knowledge and this level of communication, which is which is great. So I can, for instance, um, join meetups in Italy or Canada or the US or wherever else and uh, still be able to talk to people from the comfort or discomfort of my chair for that matter, which <laughs> is cool. Now, I do want to talk about uh, something that is a little bit challenging, I, uh, I think, in uh, especially your line of work where, where you... Um, have to be in workshops and you used to work with people in more close quarters where you can see their sort of body language because when we're going into the process of event storming you that's an important factor I think to see how people are reacting without them saying anything so facial expressions, body language, and things like that. And that was one of the topics I, I had the privilege of talking to some of my other guests, like um, Kenny Bashfegler, who also does um, uh, lots of consultancy and workshops and things like that. So now that you're doing these uh, in a virtual setting, what are your challenges? What are the things that you find that, ah, oh, I just miss doing this that like I did two years ago when I could be in the same room with these people, and now I don't have it? The, the, I have a very long list, so I'm prioritizing <laughs> my brain. Please and, go through it, yeah. <laughs> now, it, it, the, the, uh, let's say two things. Uh, one is uh, it, if you do something great, you're not going to enjoy it. So the, the, we, had, we, we had a few moments uh, in, in some workshop where, oh, it was this one. And we could do that instead. And everybody feel relieved because you could see that the, there was an ongoing pain. The organization was struggling. And now they see the solution. And this moment is amazing. And it just like uh, makes everybody <gasps> get out, yes. uh, smiling. And maybe, mm -hmm. maybe later you get, a, you get a beer with somebody, just talk about it. They are telling you right. about the story, how to get there. And, uh, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and this is great. This is rewarding. Right. And, uh, and it doesn't happen on Zoom. Just say like, exactly. okay, it's time, goodbye. If, even if you do a virtual cheers with like beers or, you know, wine, it's not the same. It's just no. not the same. No, it, 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 I mean, I don't know if it's about being Italians. I mean, it, there, there's a lot of jokes about Italians being really, really slow in saying goodbye. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'm going, oh. Right, Christians yeah, are I'm, the same, see you, yes. Like, see you, oh, yeah, 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 see you. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. <laughs> and, yeah. And I'm missing this. Uh, uh, yes. I'm missing the, the, the tail. I'm missing uh, all conferences. Oh, yeah, yes, you can connect from, from everywhere, but you're not traveling. You're not connecting with the community, the food, the space, and, and everything else. You're just switching it on. I have always the same background. Maybe I can right. read stickies. But, uh, <laughs> right. It's the same. Yeah, nevertheless. Yeah. Actually, connection with the with the context, mm -hmm. the the things that right. I could could see around. Oh, right. there's another thing which is uh, which is interesting, uh, and it and it's probably my biggest pain now. So, 
you visit an organization, you go there, you, you, you find an excuse uh, uh, to put everybody in the same room and you can observe all of these people together, how they do interact, uh, uh, little friction, uh, friendships uh, and, uh, and, and everything. But you also see the place, the context, the constraint, like sometimes the place was just like, this is just too noisy to work. You can't make, or well, this place is amazing. Like you can only do good thing. I mean, if you cannot, if you don't do good things in a place like this, uh, there's something really wrong. And uh, and these places are vanished. Like uh, um, you cannot you cannot make any deduction from Zoom. Well, you can you can. I mean, if you see somebody surrounded by by kids screaming or mm-hmm. by dogs, and you can you can well. <laughs> That's place, literally my everyday. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you you, you can <laughs> detect something, but but you you're missing. I mean, p- buildings had some power. Like sometimes you get inside the building and you feel a sense of belonging. I am part of this organization. I have this mission, and that, and uh, and this doesn't happen on Zoom. <laughs> Just right. you, you, you cannot <laughs> give give yourself a mission with a background, and um, and and uh, and then I I'm actually saying uh, the sense of identity uh, wiping away from from organization. I have to. Think like, uh, okay, I don't like this organization. I'm going to go into the new organization. Oh, wow. This new organization is a grid of 49 people inside a Zoom call. Exactly like the previous one. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. So, uh, so, then, so then how do you how do you recognize, okay, so this is, I mean, I'm sure once you start talking to, to individuals in that different organization, you get a better sense of what the challenges are and what they're trying to achieve and so forth. But I can completely understand with sort of going from, I mean, we're going from one movie theater in a way to another room in that same movie theater. It's just you're you're seeing a screen every time. You're not seeing actual human beings and in actual spaces. And what you mentioned about um, physical locations is really important because we do feel a lot of, we do actually gather a lot of information from our other senses, which are not just your sight or, you know, speech. Yep. You that how a space looks and feels, the ambiance, the smell, the food, the the feelings that you get when you enter a room. Is it a tense feeling? Is it relaxed? You know, yep. it's really hard to get that through Zoom, and I completely, completely understand. And uh, I'm not saying this is good because uh, <laughs> many many offices were completely dysfunctional. So mm-hmm. a lot of the mm-hmm. discussion between uh, remote uh, versus uh, uh, yeah in in presence. Uh, it doesn't doesn't really take into account uh, what people were used to do before. So right, like, right. Um, talking about, talking about my company, we used to do remote working already. So we were just like uh, doing most of our uh, activities uh, remotely, and we had uh, a few special uh, days along the year where we gathered in the same place. Uh, and our uh, our office is optimized for uh, for brain thinking, like. Uh, well, every single wall here yeah. uh, is... Uh, oh, I love it. I mean, it's it's really messy over there, but I can write basically everywhere. It's a design yeah. for a five-year-old kid. Um, <laughs> I love it. But, but this this place is optimized for uh, collaborative thinking. Uh, and so we were really, really uh, optimized for work from home and think together. And now we are missing exactly this. We realized that uh, the collaborative thinking happening remotely is just not happening um, at the same speed. Effectively, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's and not- for those of, yeah, and for, for the um, listeners who can't see your space, which is really cool, I wish we had a, a video of this, um, you are basically surrounded by walls of sticky notes and writings on the wall, which is, I, I think this, uh, if my kids would see this, they would be like, oh, we're in heaven. <laughs> we want to write on the walls. And this is wonderful. And this is my heaven too. I wish I could write all, all of these walls. But nevertheless, this is this is a space for you to really be able to literally put your thoughts on yeah. the paper and on the wall, which is great. So now, yeah, this, these, these uh, times are very challenging and very strange, right? Because we have to uh, change uh, a lot of ways that we used to think and work. So now that you're doing things remotely and you don't have the access to individuals to come physically to maybe your workspace or you going to theirs, 
do you use tools like Miro or other tools to do the process of brainstorming? Uh, continuously. So it's the yeah. um, event storming and also everything else. Basically, uh, let's say most of our meetings now have a format uh, and the format needs to be prepared a little. So, well, it's not only for retro practice or even storming. We, we, we did it with vision meetings. We use a lot of business model canvas. Uh, use Miro a lot. Uh, also doing crossover contamination of, uh, um, let's say, if you do even storming, it's going to take all the walls because uh, it, it's taking so much space. And then you don't have... Uh, a room big enough to have uh, even storming and business model canvas and impact mapping. On Miro, you can do it. We, we do a lot of uh, uh, hopping from one model to another one. That, that, that's the upside. And, and uh, uh, what is the downside? Well, the downside is uh, you have to prepare it before, which means uh, it's taking away some uh, uh, adaptability. Uh, one one of the things that I, that I, that I really like I just I just need a flip chart I just need a marker and a pen I see we are going in one direction with one tool I see a problem that can be solved with another tool I just need to draw the model being so responsive with Miro takes time so we prepared a lot of templates if you are here you can play this or you can play this it's just a couple of clicks away but it's it's not as flexible as uh, paper and 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 so on. Yeah. And spontaneous too, because you want yeah. people to spontaneously think about ideas and come up with them and just jog them down on the paper and just put it on the wall. Yeah. And I think that's part of that. That initially was part of the idea of event storming, right? You wanted these individuals uh, with these ideas, with business ideas or uh, what have you, come up with these ideas quickly and then put them down and then go through it and think, because it's uh, it's basically similar to the the whole idea of brainstorming when you're writing an article or what have you. Just jot down everything quickly, then go through it and pick out the important things. Yeah, it, it depends on the format. We have some right. formats which are uh, designed for quick exploration, and then progressively we see the structure or we validate the story. Uh, with other format more oriented to design, like process modeling or, or software design, we have a grammar which is constraining the conversation and basically becomes a, a collaborative game to build your own way following a sequence of colors. Uh, something like enabling constraints on, on, on the reasoning in, the, in this way. Uh, but in general, there is a, the, the principle that I was using in the background. It took me a little to understand it because I was uh, writing down the recipe and not following it. Uh, but the real recipe was, I try something, I see where this something is leading me, and then I quickly adapt. Okay, now that I can see this, uh, I, I, we just brought the event. I think that the thing we are missing here is which are the systems or which are the people, which are the boundaries, or what is, I need to draw a line between what you people are doing and what you people are doing. It, it's really, so the, the actions are not so many, but the sequence is really depending on the context. And, uh, and that's the essence of, of uh, what I do. I try something. I read quickly what is missing from this picture. I add one more layer and people think, oh, that's a great idea. And they feel like it is a plan because, oh, if you have a plan, you're more reliable. But 90% of the time is, uh, okay, I just looks like a good idea here. <laughs> right. So I'm curious to know more about the the slower process for you. So um, as you mentioned, one process is the quick thinking and jogging things down quickly. Uh, but the other uh, process that you uh, mentioned is when you take your time a little bit and use um, several colored sticky notes. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Um, yeah, we, we, we had something like a color grammar. Actually, that's, that is the one that... Uh, that we started from, like uh, blue for the command, yellow for the aggregate, and then orange for the for the event, then the lilac policy, and the, and the green read model, plus the actors and the system. That's all this. Is, uh, it was optimized for uh, the available uh, post-it uh, uh, stock at that time. Yeah, <laughs> right. And, uh, and yeah, so maybe the chorus are not, maybe not fitting uh, perfectly the... Miro stuff, but that, now Miro and Neural, they, they all adapted to what uh, 3M provided as color. Exactly, and you can adjust your colors. You can They have a color palette you can pick from it, which, yeah, <laughs> which is 
good and bad because then they have yeah, a lot of choices. Are, it's just like realizing that uh, the, the rockets uh, for space mission are just the size of two uh, horse uh, yeah. ass. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really weird. Uh, but, but... Yeah. <laughs> so the... <laughs> I love that. I love that analogy. <laughs> um, so, um, going back to those t- uh, two two um, ways of basically going about it, in terms of inviting individuals to um, each one of these um, sessions, basically, are they the same people that are coming into both sessions? So, if you have a f- sort of a, a more speedy thinking session where everybody puts things down. Where versus where you take more time, where you really uh, sort of recognize and define which one is my aggregate and which are the commands and events and so forth. Are they the same group of people who attend both or well, usually, are they different? Usually not, not exactly. You, you at least need somebody to be the glue to see the story. The, the whole idea of every brainstorming uh, workshop is to make sure you software team is uh, in close contact with the business uh, like uh, i want to understand the business problem in order to solve it and sometimes i can write software to do this oh that's great i put my my degree uh, to some to some purpose but uh, other times you don't have to write software you just have to stop doing things and uh, and do th- think think in a different way uh, talking about uh, uh, people attending the workshop it, it, it's funny because uh, uh, people are asking for uh, rules or suggestions, but uh, then it really depends on, on the people. Um, if you want to be part of the workshop, no reason not to. Uh, the, only, the only warning is, um, I, I, I like to use this DJ analogy, uh, you want to keep the people dancing. So you don't want to have a technical people starting discussing aggregates in front of the C-level uh, in, in, in the meeting. <laughs> They don't who are already losing. Yes, <laughs> you right. put on the wrong music. Make sure everybody's dancing. At the same time, okay, we clarify the business. Some people are busy. Other people might be interested because the problem you're trying to solve might be vital. So we had some workshop where mostly technical people, but a few managers were still in because they wanted to be part of the solution too. They had something to say. They they had something they wanted to see, and. Uh, well, and they're the stakeholders, so they need to be there to sort of basically pitch the, in or just listen. Yeah. For me, for me, it's just like if you want to be there, you're welcome. I'm, 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 I'm basically uh, keeping the door open. But of course, they are humans, and some of them they are amazing. Some of them they are incredibly annoying. So sometimes you have to tell somebody. <laughs> you know, How do you tell that incredibly annoying person that you are annoying? <laughs> yeah, you have to find a way, like. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, you know, some people that uh, uh, are so much um, into their own way of reasoning that they cannot think uh, uh, any other way out. So sometimes you have to, uh, okay, let's lay down a model, let them flesh it out. Okay, I like it. Now I want another one. Oh, we just already have one. Right. Just uh, you called me because you're stuck. If you're just redesigning yeah. your your same uh, model once again, only with sticky notes, uh, we need we need something different. We need to have options. We need to choose between different alternatives. But now we are safe because we already have a solution. I would like to be in the privileged position of choosing between two or three, and uh, and and that's that's a completely different uh, position. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Alberto so far. Please join me next time for the second half of our conversation. Until then, have a great time and happy coding.